Hello there, friend, and welcome to week three and four of The Bachelorette. I am a little bit behind, had some in real life stuff going on, so we're going to have to recap week three and then we'll kind of get into the nitty gritty of week four. I am again joined by my guest, Lost in Japan, if you want to say hello. Hello, I am here, bacheloring it up. What's up, Bachelor Nation? <laughs> anyway, it's it's messed up my algorithm like i get so much bachelor content now that is so weird because i get nothing i mean i don't mind because like I, I enjoy watching it with you and stuff in general but it's just like <laughs> i didn't expect yeah. that it just all of a sudden get like i go on there and it's like oh yeah here's bachelor content i mean it's because like i watch your videos too you know because i'm a fan yeah you know? no that, that's know. interesting though I, I it's weird because i haven't gotten like anything um but anyway Let's jump into it. We're going to do kind of a little, we're going to speed through a little bit of a recap of week three. Um, so last week we had quite a bit of stuff happened. Uh, some key points. We kind of saw some alliances forming. We saw an alliance forming between Devin and Sam N. Uh, showing kind of that Devin's a little bit protective of Sam N. And we see the continued alliance of Thomas N and Sam M. Uh, so those are some alliances that I feel like are forming a little bit, um, especially because they're kind of against each other. You know, they're like, oh, we're friendships and we're we're get against each other. And me personally, I feel like Thomas and Sam are giving off mean girl energy. And something that's annoying to me is they keep saying, oh, we're going to keep the main thing the main thing. It's <laughs> so annoying. Well, obviously. It must be a thing that's going out there. I'm not. Because, like, we, f we saw it on, on WWE also, they like, said that, and I was just like, where's this come from? <laughs> I hate it. Yeah, it's very weird. I'm not sure what it's about or what it's from, but I don't like it. And after that, they get the date card, and Jen goes on a solo date with Spencer. I, I just wanted to say, I actually really like Spencer. He seems just, like, generally kind of just a chill, nice person. In my opinion, they go on like a little helicopter date. He takes this time to kind of open up to Jen about how he was engaged and he found out he was being cheated on. They end up kissing, but I just personally I just don't see it. Between Sam and Sp or between Jen and Spencer, um I just don't think that I think Spencer's almost too nice for Jen if that makes sense. Oh yeah, it does. It, it really does feel like it's something like that. I feel like Spencer is the kind of person, when she's grown more as a person, she I could see her wanting to be with. I don't know. I, I'm obviously watching a television so, show, so I don't know this person, but I, I think that Jen has a lot more growing as a person to do before she's ready for someone like Spencer. Um, anyway, they have another date card. This one's a group date. So the group date involves Dylan, Marcus, Thomas A., John M., Grant, Jonathan, Sam N., Thomas N, Sam M, so both Thomases, both Sams, and Devin. Uh, what ends up happening is they go to this club where they get like a, like a crash course in how to strip, and they're told, hey, you're going to be performing for Jen, and there's going to be a crowd. There's Jen, a crowd, and then some two of the Australian bachelorettes, like former bachelorettes, and this is... Oh my gosh, this is so wild. It, to me, it was wild. It was a big... Yeah, it was very wild. It really was. Um, you know, right off the bat, Salmon ends up getting injured, and he's not feeling the stripping thing. He explains he's very uncomfortable with it. He's very nervous about it. And honestly, a lot of the guys are nervous about it. But what I appreciate about most of the guys is they try to break out of that shell, and they try to go out there and have a good time and do something different that they're not comfortable with. You know, we see how the show goes. I, I'm going to be honest, this episode, Japan and I both kind of mentioned that Jonathan is growing on us. Um, at first, we weren't kind of feeling him, you know, especially with his entrance in the first episode. We were like, okay, this is weird. I'm not sure about this guy. But honestly, he did have a wild interest, entrance, but he seems fun and he seems nice and I'm liking him a lot more. And one thing I also enjoyed was actually Devin in this episode, um, at least during 
this portion of the episode, Devin kind of expresses that, you know, he doesn't have a body that's as ripped or as fit as the other guys, and he's very anxious about that feeling, and he grew up as a bigger kid, so that kind of feeds into his insecurities. But honestly, I was so proud of him. He goes out there, like, he gets, like, the closest to naked of anyone. He go fully goes for it. Like, he's got his little thong on. He, he literally is so expressive. He worked so hard. And I was so proud of him. I respected him so much for really putting himself out there and trying to do something that made him nervous and anxious and... I think we both kind of felt that way. Absolutely, yeah. It was, like, the only thing. Because, like, yeah. I honestly don't think Devin's, like, a bad person. I just, like, like we discussed before, I just think he's playing the game a little bit more than yeah. just actually wanting to be there, which, you know, is not the right way of, of feeling it. No, exactly. I, I agree. But we did like him for this, and honestly, I felt like a lot of the guys had fun. They enjoyed themselves. They put themselves out there. They pushed their boundaries a little bit and that's what this whole thing's about you know is pushing your boundary is doing something different something you might not be super comfortable with or something that you maybe wouldn't have tried before and a lot of the guys do that however we keep kind of going back to sam in and how nervous he is and we get to the, his act which is the final of the night he comes out as the love virgin and he yells at everybody cut the music cut the music and he comes out, and he basically just kind of confesses to Jen that, oh, he's falling for her, and, like, basically almost saying that he's in love with her already. And, oh. Yeah. Uh, it was the worst cringe that I've ever had. I don't think he is ready to be in a real relationship not even an, an I mean not even a relationship so an engagement to me is just <laughs> not crazy it, he, you know I don't think there's anything wrong with getting married to the first person that you fall in love with but when you're this far behind compared to where Jin is at and he is so out of touch with I don't know I think some of him it seems like he's kind of playing the game too but we'll, we'll kind of get more into that as we talk about uh, week four, but I don't know. It just, it was not it. And Jonathan ends up winning the strip contest, which we were happy about. I felt like his was fun. He had Jen's name on his underwear. It was, it was pretty good. And after that, a lot of drama starts to kind of go down between the boys because, you know, Sam's like, oh, <laughs> you know, I did what I did and a bunch of fighting breaks out. These guys are just not getting along at all. I've never seen The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, so maybe this is completely normal, but oh my god. It's I feel so like it is. It probably is. I mean, there's too much Yeah. And then after that we see a group date with Jeremy, Aaron, Hakeem, and Austin. They go to a racetrack. It looks like fun actually. They learn how to drive a race car and they're supposed to try to win uh the race and Jeremy during the race actually ends up pulling over and takes this special moment with Jen to make out with her. And yeah, because that was of a pretty this, smart idea. it was, it was smooth. He lost the race. However, he chose, cause that's one thing Jen consistently talks about, right? She constantly is like, I want guys that will find this special moments. And he gave up winning the race to sit there with her and have a moment with her. Um, it was pretty smooth. And that actually ends up getting him the date rose. So, you know, it made sense. And then later, well, throughout the episode, we're kind of seeing how Aaron gets this call saying that he's been called up to do fighter pilot training and they can't hold a spot. So either he has to stay or go. And he had tried to take this day to see if he could connect to Jen. And when he didn't get the date rose, it really affected him. And later that night, he's like, hey, I'm going home. I'm not doing this. I'm going to go to fighter pilot training. And Jin's super understanding. But right before he leaves, we get some piping hot tea. The tea is being spilt. He says that some oh, of the guys basically aren't there authentically. 
but he doesn't drop names. This causes a, lot. a crazy <laughs> spiral. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> the spiral is insane. Everybody's accusing each other. It's just, it's nasty. It's nasty. And Jen, you know, she's like, y'all need to be here for the right reason. She's like, kind of like really upset with everybody trying to, you know, be like, hey, you know, you're supposed to respect me and what this is. And if you're not here for the right reasons, then go home. And at the end of the night, we see Thomas A. and Hakeem go home. Personally, I wasn't surprised by that. Even on the one-on-ones, we see how all the other guys have these very intimate, close conversations with Jen, and then they switch, and Hakeem and her are at a table, separated from each other during his one-on-one. The the chemistry is not there, and I don't think it's been there, personally, at least on Jen's side. Um, So, Thomas A. and Hakeem go home, and... That's kind of a recap of last week's episode. And yeah, let's, uh, do you have anything else you wanted to kind of bring up about last week's? Anything that stood out that you wanted to talk more about? Uh, not really. I mean, it was just mainly that whole, like, him leaving and not telling her just kind of, like, really was just annoying. He should have just said it. Like, why why just not say who it is at that point? It felt unfair to Jen. And yeah. it just, yeah, it felt, I completely agree. Um, so yeah, let's jump into week four. So week four, we have location change. We end up in Auckland, New Zealand. And honestly, from the f- start of the episode, we have Sam in, Sam M complaining about Devin. I swear to God, it's so icky. I I just, all they do is just complain, and I just, I don't know. Him and Thomas have honestly turned into, I just don't enjoy watching them. They're just (laughs) jerks. They seem like mean girls, honestly, to me. (laughs) I don't know. Um, Yeah. So that's, yeah, that was my vibe. And something funny that I, I just kind of wanted to mention, they had this little tidbit in, at the start of the episode, Jesse, the, um, what's his last name? Palmer? Yeah, Jesse Palmer. Uh, he's talking to Jen and he's like, oh, do you know why we don't really have you guys eat food? And apparently he's like, oh yeah, it was my fault. I ruined eating food for everyone because I kept shoving my mouth full with food. I I don't know. I thought that was kind of funny. I don't know (laughs) if that's actually why. Talking about when he was on, um, on on his season. I didn't know he was on it. We might actually have to go back and watch that if it's available to us. But, uh, I thought that was funny. Yeah, it might be interesting. And, of course, you know, everybody's wanting one-on-one time. They're like, ooh, we want the one-on-one date. We want we want to be the one. And Sam M. actually gets the one-on-one date. Of course, Devin is. Devin is so pissed about this. He's so bitter. And it's just like, ooh. Ooh, brother, ooh. <laughs> ooh, brother, ooh. <laughs> yes, um... Before Sam goes on the date, Devin kind of mentions that Sam M needs to learn how to have an authentic conversation with Jen. He's basically kind of calling into question how authentic Sam M can be. And personally, I kind of agree with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just, it's purely physical and that's not going to be a thing to last you that long. That's see that's my thought. I don't feel like Jen and Sam M have real chemistry. I mean they have sexual chemistry, which is fine. I'm not there's nothing wrong with having sexual chemistry with someone, but if you're here for someone that you want to marry, you need all of those things. You know, sexual chemistry is an excellent thing to have, but also having real authentic chemistry. And actually I, I agree with Devin. I don't I don't think that Sam M has that with Jen. But um, they go to the top of this needle building, which depends, like, feels like every city has one of these. And you're not wrong. Yeah, it, does, one. <laughs> it does feel like that. So they go to the top of this building. It looks beautiful. Um, a gorgeous place to have a date. And as they're sitting there, they see a person fall off the building. And they're like, what? <laughs> what was that? Because they have um, 
where you can jump off the building and do this walk around the top of it. And Sam, well, the waiter comes up and kind of mentions it. And Sam's like, yeah, we're going to jump. Like, he doesn't even talk to Jen about if that's something that she wants to do. He just makes that decision for the both of them, which immediately pisses Jen off. And what I don't like is that she's clearly actually upset and he doesn't pick up on that. He's just like, no, we're going to do it. I'm telling you, we're doing it. Like, he's just being like, uh, I'm going to make you do it. Um, I just think it's really awkward and uncomfortable. Absolutely. Because it's just like she's sitting there not wanting to do it at all. And like, it's like one thing to like to bring it up once because obviously she's afraid of heights. So like to push her. Wants yeah. To make that moment. But like it clearly was a lot of brushback and I would have been just like, OK, that's fine. We don't have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. And it, it just kind of shows how little real life chemistry they have or like, you know, it doesn't translate to them spending time together. And he keeps pushing her and finally kind of realizes, oh, maybe I shouldn't. So they do, they go for like a walk at the top. They basically have you walk over these um, metal slats while hooked to, you know, a rope or whatever. And when they get up there, the... Jin is just completely scared. She's terrified of heights, and we've already seen this before. We actually, I mean, call back to, I believe, it what, was it episode one or two where they go skydiving? And it goes so much better because Marcus is so emotionally available to her during that time and so comforting that she's able to do it. And we see the stark contrast of that with Sam and Jen where... He just keeps pushing her, not physically, but, like, keeps being like, oh, yeah, like, they're up there. She's terrified. He's not comforting her. And he pushes her. He, like, leans over the edge and he's like, oh, come kiss me. and Come kiss me. Come kiss me. And you really see how much their relationship is just based off of lust and not actual chemistry and not actual connection. And, yeah. I mean, it takes Jen crying for him to step up and be like, oh, wait, sorry, I've pushed you. And and then they end up actually doing the jump. But it shouldn't take your partner breaking down in tears for you to understand where they are emotionally and for you to listen. Because it wasn't even like a unsaid thing. She was clearly communicating that she wasn't comfortable and he just didn't listen it it's was just all. it's all lust and sam i i have to agree i don't think sam has a lot of depth and i think that he's hiding behind that shallowness um or hiding behind lust he's hiding his shallowness with lust oh my god if i could talk um at least i mean right like you feel like that yeah. too no absolutely so I, it's working I'm, out for him so it is i just i i probably you know I was going to say I'm probably biased because I didn't like Sam M from the first episode, but honestly, I didn't care much for Marcus or Jonathan, but they've both really grown on me. So I, I just don't think Sam has grown on me because personally, I just don't see anything there. You know, it gets very hot and heavy with him and Jen. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with sexual chemistry with someone, but you need more than sex to have a good relationship. But it's not translating and I hope that she can see that. So we get back to the hotel and we get another date card. So it's going to be another group date. And honestly, everyone except Devin is invited. So there's Spencer, Marcus, Grant, John M., Austin, Jonathan, Dylan, Thomas, Jeremy, and Sam and all get invited to this group date. Devin is not. And Devin's like, oh, yeah, it's because I get a solo date. Which later he does. So... It pans back to Sam and Jen. Um, so they, they kind of do this thing where they'll do a daytime part of the day and then an evening time. And there's like some space in between probably to change location, outfits, yada yada uh, for filming. But so they go to the night portion of their date and they're kind of having conversations and Jen's expressing that she needs someone to 
be willing to work on themselves and work on themselves emotionally in a relationship. And she even asks Sam, she says, what do you need in a relationship? And he says, oh, I want a wild, passionate relationship and one where, like, a relationship that we can work on. And honestly, it just feels so shallow. He just, I think one thing that has bothered me at this point is he's so repetitive. He's like, oh, I want a ferocious love, a passionate love, like the same thing over and over that Jen said in the first episode. Like, and then he keeps saying, I'm going to keep the main thing, the main thing, like the same shtick over and over and over. And I just... Got that NPC energy. He does. And I don't vibe with it. I just don't. And, and maybe I, I I, personally believe that Sam also has some social anxiety at play here in the ways that he replies. But there are moments where I genuinely feel like he's not actively listening to her. Like he's listening, but he's actively in the back of his mind thinking about the best way to reply to her instead of actually sitting there and taking in what she's saying um and she she has a moment of vulnerability she talks about her parents divorcing and everything that happened with that which honestly sounds terrible her dad just pretty much abandoned her and she's saying you know it's hard to fully trust people and she doesn't feel like she's worthy of love or that she hasn't felt like she's worthy of a relationship a good relationship or love and she even tears up again and Sam just keeps regurgitating the Sam things that he says and um he talks about you know how he was engaged and then found out he was being cheated on which Japan and I touched on this in the first episode how it felt very weird yeah I don't think it's true (laughs) there's something odd about it because it's been less than a year since he signed up for The Bachelor, since his engagement broke off. Like, there had to be very few months between him signing up for The Bachelor and getting broken up with, and we just felt like something's a little weird about his story there. So, I'm not sure. We don't know the real story. Um, Obviously, we can only go off of what we know, but we personally feel very put off by that, and just there's something off about this guy but the problem is jen is falling for him and i just can't help but be like girl why girl why and i (laughs) i'm gonna be honest this is all coming from what we're seeing on tv so i know it's edited it's you know they're putting in what they want but i think that jen is going for the same old guy um yeah I think she's just going for the same type of guy, the same toxic guy. And I think that she wants something different, but she's falling into old habits and old habits die hard. So Sam ends up getting a rose and she says that she's falling for him. So, (laughs) okay. All right. Ooh, brother. Ooh. Okay. So we about to get into the next part. So much happened here. So we have another group date and they're going to be playing rugby. So this is the group date I was talking about with all the guys and they have some interesting cultural stuff. Um, I, I'm going to Maori culture. They have a dance of it and it's it's actually really cool how much of this culture is introduced into this episode and they have a ceremonial dance, apparently, before every rugby thing. So they went ahead and did it for them as well, which I thought was really cool. And we kind of hop into the group date. And immediately, Sam in is like, he comes in with this. Okay, I'm going to say it. I think that Sam in thinks he has some big dick energy. And that's what he's expressing. And he's going to be like, oh, I'm going to get my girl. She's my girl. And I'm going to have all this confidence. And I'm going to lay it on thick. And him and Jen, like, they kind of are roughhousing, playing together. Sam just has this whole thing, this whole bit for this this little group thing. And while they're showing this, they actually take us back to the, to the hotel. And the only two people there, of course, are Sam M. and Devin. And it is so uncomfortable. They start 
basically Sam, Devin calls out Sam and he's just saying um, that Sam's constantly being like, oh, I'm going to keep it the main thing, the main thing when he's really not making it about Jen. And they have this like little yelling match and it's just super uncomfortable. And I just don't know why they interact with each other at all. Now, I know for TV, they're asking them to interact. You know, they're putting them in those situations to be alone together. But I personally think it's super uncomfortable. I agree. It's just, ooh. And we kind of get back to the rugby field. And I personally, I'm looking back at my notes and... I literally wrote at this point, I think that Sam N is going home. I, I'm not picking up good vibes from Jen. I don't think she's enjoying him. And I'm just going to say it now. I put in my notes that I think he's going home. <laughs> and obviously everybody is not feeling it with Sam. He's being super cocky and it kind of continues back to the house. Sam's like walking in front of all the guys. He's got like his jersey that says Sam's wife that he's going to give to Jen. He's got that strung over his shoulder and he's got the trophy and he's like, I'm on my boss bitch energy, which I'm just like, I, honey, it, it's so <laughs> cringy and it's just awkward. It's just so awkward and he they get in in the house and he puts the puts the trophy on a chair to make it to where you know no one else can sit there and it's just i it, he's acting like a douche and he's Absolutely. been spending he's been spending too much time with Devin and i think that's part of why um it's just Ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> um, but then we see the one-on-ones and we get a one-on-one -on -one with Jonathan and Jen and they're playing Quidditch. Not Quidditch. What? <laughs> That's Harry Potter. Lacrosse. They're playing lacrosse. They're playing Quidditch. Um, and honestly, it looked really cute. It looked fun. I liked that they were doing something a little different and it just, it looks like they're having like a cute, fun time. Like I said, Jonathan's growing on me and they end up having like a good convo and they end up kissing and I just, I liked it. I thought it was, it was cute. And then, and then Jen has her one-on-one -on -one with Grant and they also kiss and she talks about how she feels at ease with Grant and I still am not sure how I feel about Grant. We've kind of talked in the past episodes how we kind of feel like he's not super authentic. It feels yeah. like he's just regurgitating stuff that he thinks she wants to hear um so yeah it's just it is it is what it is and we see jeremy and jen together and then we see kind of the guys having it out on sam you know saying that he doesn't have emotional intelligence you know he's basically acting like a kid and i personally like i mentioned before i think he's acting a lot like devin i think he's been around devin too much and sam's just like not listening he's like i don't care like i'm gonna do my thing and then he goes outside and thomas goes out and they get in like a big fight and honestly i don't know why thomas constantly thinks he needs to be the guy to like have conversations with other guys when it doesn't one doesn't go well and two they clearly aren't super close and it's just i don't know it's uncomfortable to me personally no oh, yeah i completely agree it's like he he feels like he he's like the alpha in the freaking fan and it's just like it ends up always just making him look bad and ruining his i mean he's just and he's also he, sam's you know. side bitch sam m's it just feels like he's yeah. sam m's side bitch so i just it's it's weird. It's uncomfortable. And then we get a one-on-one -on -one with Marcus and Jen and they end up having a really sweet conversation. And we find out that during rugby, Marcus actually got injured and Jen brought like a little stethoscope. It was kind of a, she was trying to have like a cute moment. And Marcus kind of gets a little emotional and talks about how he's, you know, always dealt with pain alone. And... Um, this is really, this is no exception to that. Like, basically, he's having a hard time admitting that he's in pain and that he's hurt. 
And he even gets more vulnerable with Jen and he tells her that he needs a little space. Which is good, you know. I think it's so authentic personally because there are competing for her love and to me i i would have been scared to be like hey i'm i'm hurt you know because you would and i need space because you would think oh well maybe i'm gonna get sent home but i actually really appreciated that um from marcus asking for that space but i do also believe that marcus would i think marcus could use some therapy to process some of the things that happened to him because i think it makes it hard for him to communicate because it is important to communicate things with your partner and pain is one of those things as well now i know that they are still getting to know each other but that's my personal opinion but like i said marcus has actually really really grown on me and i don't know i appreciate it you know i really do um after that, we kind of see how Sam is being like, yeah, I'm done. Like, he's fully confident he is getting the rose tonight. I wrote again in my notes, I think Sam's going home. <laughs> I've written this multiple times in my notes. He's not. It's just. Ew. Ew. I don't know. Um, I. It just. <laughs> it's just. It's just weird. I. I. I don't know what he's doing in this episode. Like I said, I think he's definitely spent a little too much time around Devin. And I don't know. And and I can't remember if it was now or before that he had the conversation with Thomason. But Sam actually kind of calls Thomas out and says, you should be talking to Jen. Why are you talking to me? And I couldn't help but agree with that. Once again, I feel like Thomas thinks he's this guy that needs to have conversations with everyone. And uh, he's not. It's not his place. You know, at the end of the day, no matter how anybody acts, it's their prerogative to act how they want and to handle themselves how they want. And they have like a little talking head with Thomas and... He's spending way too much time with Sam. He's talking about ferocious love. And he's like, we're going to keep the main thing the main thing. And I just think they've been spending way too much time together. Um, It's just so... Bros being more bros than anybody else. Yeah, it's just uncomfortable. And Thomas gets his one-on-one with Jen. Okay, so then it gets (laughs) so uncomfortable. I feel like I'm having freaking deja vu. Because Sam in goes in on Thomas. And he's like, yo, I need some time with the girl, you know. Um, You know, Thomas was in the middle of kind of talking about his parents being immigrants. And I just, I wrote down in my notes that it felt like Jen wasn't super interested. It could have just been weird. Nah, she didn't seem interested at all. I mean, she just said, oh, yeah, it's fine. You know, which I, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that if she was having a good time. It was almost like he was relieved to be taken from him, but... Yeah, Um, it's just uncomfortable and it just doesn't feel like she's super interested. And then, you know, Salmon goes up there, gets Jen. Obviously, Thomas is super mad. And while Sam is with Jen, he says, he he asks to kiss her. And I just want to point out that Jen has had no problems kissing everyone. She's been kissing everyone tonight. And she's like, hey, you know, a first kiss is a really big deal. I don't think this is it. Basically, she just lets him know, I don't think you're it for me. And this isn't it. And she walks him out and makes him leave. She sends him home fully. Yeah, that is insane. I don't. I mean, obviously, we both haven't watched this, but I've never seen it like that or even remotely would have thought it would have happened like that. Especially with the rose ceremony being only a couple hours after that, like, you know, it was supposed to be. Yeah, it is. Or the next night. Like, it was just like, yeah, I just, I really don't want another day of this. It is. Wow. Like, to me, I was absolutely blown away. And then it shows him in the car and he's just, like, really embarrassed. And honestly, I would be too. You know, I think Sam lost his authenticity and he really doesn't know what he's doing and he was acting like an ass you know at the end of the day um trying to get someone's attention is fine you know wanting to 
put yourself out there and, and try to find love is one thing, but treating other people like trash in the midst of it is not how you do it. And if you're meant to be with that person, it will work out. And I just think that he he just went in a little too far. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it just... It just is what, you know, it is what it is, but, um... The main thing is the main thing. (laughs) Gotta keep the main thing the main thing. (laughs) After that, we see Marcus get the date rose. He actually tears up, and it's really sweet. I... I'm here for Marcus at this point. And after that, we get to the one-on-one date with Devin. You know, at first I'm like, ooh, Devin. But actually, it was... It was actually kind of sweet. They go to experience more about the Maori culture and learn about it more. And they go into this sacred space and Devin kind of talks about his background and his life more and how growing up was for him. And they once again learn more about the culture. And then Jen kind of talks about her background. She talks about being Vietnamese and how I think this is a common thing that happens with a lot of people um immigrants in the united states is as kids it's so hard to integrate this culture and this background that you come from with being an american person especially when you don't have other people like you around and you kind of reject that culture at first and then you have to find a way to find your way back to it while also accepting this new identity as an american person And she talks about how difficult that is. And, um, you know, it was a sweet moment. She, I can't remember if it was now or later, but she kind of talks about how she's a Buddhist and she wants to incorporate that. And Devin basically is just like, hey, um, all I want is a happy, healthy family. That's all I want. So it sounds like they kind of align with what they would like. And he's... He doesn't quite say it, but it sounds like it's okay. He's okay with Buddhism or, like, with raising them with Buddhist values. So, you know. Yeah, like, time will tell on that one. (laughs) I mean, yeah. You know, it really is. And they end up going to a theater in the evening. I'm thinking they're going to go see a show, but it's kind of weird. They just kind of sit on the stage and have drinks, and it's gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. The theater is absolutely beautiful i just think it's a little odd to go to a theater and then not actually get to watch a show i think that's a little (laughs) it's insane it's so weird it was a little odd um you know this is where devin really gets into the nitty-gritty about his family he mentions that the whole way devin came up you know about was that his mom had a fling in college she had devin you know his dad wasn't really around and they moved around a lot and he idolized his dad and kind of treated his mom kind of crappy um and hurt her by being like yeah i don't want to live with you i want to live with dad even though the dad he didn't understand that the dad didn't want to be in his life and um he talks about how his mom you know still did the right thing she took care of him and loved him no matter how much he lashed out and how he was kind of a troublemaker as a kid and jen talks about how her dad walked away and she's always kind of gone for guys that didn't know what her value is and i think that's because she doesn't see her own value and absolutely it's really tough and i mean i'm not gonna go too deep into it but being a woman in a world where you're so easily taken advantage of is really hard and I think this happens to a lot of women and I really do hope that by the end of this Jen does find someone that treats her well and even if it's not the person she ends up marrying I hope that they end up at least it teaches her something good about herself. And at the end of the date, Devin says he's falling for her and she ends up giving him the rose. And I just have to talk about how that's so weird how this random guy just rolls up and he starts singing. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's awkward. Like, he's in the audience of the theater and he's just, like, singing and it's just like, huh, odd. Um, But honestly, I felt like Devin was more authentic during this episode than... In any of the previous episodes, he's great in a one-on-one setting, but when he's with the other guys, it feels like it turns into a competition and he treats it like a game. But I I think it was refreshing to see this authentic side of Devin, personally. Yeah, definitely. Still like him. I I don't quite like him either. 
I, I think that he kind of poisoned Sam in a lot. I think that's really honestly why Sam got sent home. Um, I think that Sam viewed it more as a game, kind of like Devin, and Devin knows how to play the game better than Sam did, clearly. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where we leave that. And then we get the, like, we get thrown like a curveball. So they're like, yeah. we have this guy from Jen's, we have this person from Jen's past. They reached out to a producer and he flew himself halfway across the world to come see Jen. And he's an ex from Jen's past. So he had dated Jen like three years ago for a few months. And it sounds like they've kind of been on and off over the years. And he comes to see Jen and he tells her he loves her and that he wants a future with her. And it's yeah. <laughs> just, wow. Um, they ended up becoming friends after all the dating, yada, yada. But it's just, it's so wild to me that, like, if someone needs, here's here's my take on it. If someone needs for you to be making a big life decision or a big life change to come to terms with the fact that they're in love with you, I'm not sure I vibe with that. It's not fair. It's not fair to, you are being selfish in that moment, you know, instead of taking, he had plenty of ample opportunity, especially during their friendship, to tell her that he was in love with her and he didn't. And I don't know. To me, it's not fair. It's not fair to her to, I don't like him. I just don't like him. I don't think it's fair of him to come here and do this to her in the middle of this, personally. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, do you do you feel like is it, like do you think it's crappy to do that? Like, to am I? I I do I do believe it is pretty crappy. the The problem is it's just the whole like drama part of it. You know, I don't I don't know mm -hmm. exactly also how Jen did this. Like, Jen could have just like dipped, you know, and then he was like, oh, right. I should no, that's something. true. That's true. So we don't a little hard. Yeah, we don't really know exactly the. Well, to be it, fair though, she was on The Bachelor. Yeah, but I mean, like, if, if you know, if, I don't know, it's weird, because, like, if you thought yeah. that was just your friend, then you probably wouldn't really be thinking much of it, but I think it's, like, I don't it's know. A it's a weird one. one. It is. I completely agree. I felt, I it just didn't, I don't like him, though. He gives me weird vibes, but he's going to be joining, I think. I think he's going to be joining uh the the cast of guys, Um, so... Yeah. We actually didn't get a rose ceremony. I don't know. It was just a wild episode. Okay, this episode, the last episode, have been crazy. We've had guys, like, going home without the rose. I don't know. It just feels like it's been a wild episode. Oh, it has been for sure. I like it, though. I like it a lot. I do, too. I'm enjoying this season. You know, that's how it ends. And I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see how this new guy in the mix kind of might cause some issues but anyway make sure you guys let us know down below who you are liking who you want to stay who you want to go home what do you guys think what what are your guys's opinions you know we would love to see, hear some other perspectives on the guys yeah, who would you guys... pick right now yeah who would, who would... right now also who me you? um honestly i marcus probably um, I'm gonna go with Jonathan because Marcus needs therapy, yeah, and I don't think that's no, no, no. the right that's, spot. I had more to say there. Um, okay, sorry. No, you're good. I I like Jonathan a lot too. I think one thing I liked about Marcus is that he's someone that has gone through something. And no, I agree that like he needs therapy, um, and he needs to work on himself. It it would be contingent on him being willing to seek professional help. But I think I appreciate that there is something there that's a little deeper and something that is you can relate to in that in that manner. Um, but probably also I, I really like Jonathan, too. Yeah. But yeah, that is that is episodes three and four. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys check out Japan's channel. Make sure you drop a follow to catch 
our covers and recaps of every week. I'm going to be dropping episodes every Friday. This one's super late. Like I said, I've had some life stuff happening, but I'm going to try to be make sure I'm on time every Friday. Anyway, like I said, thank you guys for watching. Let us know. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Let's have some conversations in the comments, and we'll catch you guys next week. Bye, friends. Bye.